Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them. On the 20th of November 2003, James Ignatius O'Rourke McMahon was elected councillor for the Failsworth East Ward of Oldham. Deeply ambitious, he ruthlessly rose to power and by 2011 he was already leader of the council. In 2015, exploiting a Labour Party loophole, he became MP for Oldham Western Royton. If only the people of the town knew then what they now know. Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them. A very, very good evening, Sunday the 14th of April 2024. We're back to our Sunday night slot. I'm very grateful to be back to our Sunday night slot. I I prefer it, if I'm honest with, with all of you. So I'm hoping you find value in it too. We've been at this for, for a number of years now, these transmissions. These transmissions on YouTube and Facebook before that, at least three years, and we well over five years in this campaign and from the beginning i think my message to everyone was very very clear you heard it on the intro video you see me sign off with it on most of my posts do not fear them do not fear any of them which is why i was surprised that the leader of the oldham group the former conservative former labor party hmo millionaire cammy g thought he could threaten me, blackmail me even, not directly, but to sending messages and phone calls to numerous friends of mine. Apparently, if I don't behave, he's going to teach me a lesson. Well, I'm right here. And many people before Kamiji have tried to teach me a lesson, and I'm sure Kamiji won't be the last of the politicians in this town who want to teach me a lesson. And as long as politicians want to teach me a lesson, then as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing the right thing. So please go ahead and teach me my lesson. And we'll go on to what that lesson is as the evening goes on. I hope you found value in last Sunday's transmission. I certainly did. I found it hilarious and entertaining and I went to sleep with a with a smile on my face. To those of you who have not been back to this week, I've been away for a few days, so that's that's why I got back late yesterday evening. And I have a whole host of leaflets and campaigning materials to produce for a whole you know, a range of candidates and I'm I'm making my way through all of that. The crowdfunder that many of you have supported for leaflets for independent candidates and uh, essentially to remove Labour Party candidates in May's election has gone well. You know, it's it's past the one thousand pound mark. We've got it. We've definitely got enough to get two, possibly three leaflets out. So we we will on our way to doing that. The first one's already gone off to print. Uh, it was Lynn who hi Lynn who. Help me out with a few typos. The second one is for Peter Brown. I'm meeting Peter Brown on Tuesday for him to sign off his leaflet and I'll, that will go out. And I'm thinking possibly, possibly, possibly one in Hollywood for some of my supporters there. I think it's time, maybe it's time we taught Kami G a lesson. And if not Hollywood, I'm thinking maybe Waterhead where I know we've got other people standing, independent standing. Paul Taylor standing with his Oldham team there. Oldham Heart team. Maybe we'll go there. Threatening me is never a good idea. So, let's get on with this evening. And please, if you find value in the transmissions, like, share, share, these transmissions, I put this one out free to air as well. It's only possible with your support. There's a buy me a coffee link 
up there somewhere in fact i'll find it now and i'll put it on the screen you can see it's pinned on your post so if you can buy me a coffee i would be extremely grateful it's ordinarily only the same people who who support me in that way same with the super chats if you find value please uh, consider you know if you don't want to click off the link please consider uh, a super chat and i get i think i get half of that money so i'm happy with that as well the super chat money all goes towards our christmas meal anyway i don't think they do learn then i don't think these people learn at all and starting with people who don't learn we have the shameless maggie hurley joined by jade hughes now i'm not going to pin this on jade hughes i think she's young and i don't think it's her per se her father is is the instigator you know he's the puppet master behind that john hughes they have decided suddenly to champion cse once again now survivors of cse Reuton survivors of cse have contacted me and told me about maggie hurley and the Reuton independence no longer wanted to support cse no longer wanted to support them wouldn't be attending any of the events etc etc but now it's election time again. Maggie Hurley, the mute, mute Maggie Hurley, is suddenly again pretending she's somehow a CSE advocate. I am very clear on this. Maggie Hurley played every one of us, including the people of Brighton. She has no interest in CSE, and if she does have any interest in CSE, She's not capable of leading it because she won't even open her mouth in the council chamber. Stand up, no emotions, nothing from her, remember. Nothing absolutely from her. Nothing on the motion of no confidence. Nothing, no amendments. And the one time she, her and her team put together something, they voted against their own amendment. And Maggie Hurley spoke to me to my face with John Hughes sat next to her and was very clear on a series of allegations made against Councillor Mark Ince. I went and told Councillor Mark Ince and Maggie Hurley and John Hughes then lied to Mark Ince. Now they've all now fallen out because that's what liars do between themselves. So that's what's took place there. So I have no confidence in Maggie Hurley and I have even less confidence. Well, not even less, I don't... Jade Hughes hasn't got the capabilities to be a councillor any more than Maggie Hurley has. We know who the puppet master is. We know what this is. This is just opportunism. It's, it's disgraceful, really. It's disgraceful. And I've been reflecting on this, uh, not per se this post, but this issue all week whilst I've been away with my daughter and after Warren's death. And when I took it on, I didn't realise what it would cost me. And so we're clear, it's cost me my liberty. It's cost me my reputation. And it's uh, nearly cost me my life. I've not gained from this. But these people have come along, jumped on the bandwagon. And Maggie Hurley is one such individual. John Hughes can't stand, I'm, I'm hearing, Jack. I'm hearing John Hughes cannot stand. And one of the reasons why you cannot stand, and I don't know the, if this is the reason, but one of the reasons you couldn't stand in an Oldham election is if you didn't live in Oldham. You know, in the Metropolitan Borough, didn't work in it, or didn't own property in it. Now, my understanding is John Hughes does. One of the other reasons is if you have a criminal record with a, you know, with a substantial uh, penalty attached to it. And I think there's a couple of other reasons as well. So maybe someone should ask John Hughes as to why he doesn't stand. Or maybe he just doesn't have the courage and he likes to do have other people put in front of him. But that's by the by. This isn't really about John Hughes per se. This is about Maggie Hurley. She's a councillor. She's took over £10,000 of our money this year. She can't be trusted with the truth. And I think she's manipulated everyone in writing. And I'm actually... It's not anger. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in Lewis and the Conservatives allowing themselves to be blackmailed by the right and independents and not putting up a Conservative candidate in right and south. 
I'm genuinely disappointed in them for that. No, not a word from her in 12 months, was there, Sheila? Not a word from her in 12 months. And now, come election season, this is what they're up to. Since the last since the last year's election, they can't even fucking spell. What's the grammar? Who on earth writes this bollocks? There's no need for the word ver in it, so it should be since last year's election. And actually, the last year's election should have an apostrophe in it. Because it's possessive. Rather than plural. I think, I think that's the right word for yeah, fraud. So if you're looking for someone to vote for in Royton South, I'd go and vote for the Green candidate. Miranda Meadowcroft is standing in Royton North against Lewis. I'm not going to... You know, she's a friend of mine. Old, old friend of mine. Decent woman, but she's got candidates up in Royton South. As well as across the board. Go and vote for the Green candidate. For the love of God, don't vote for Maggie Hurley or Jade Hughes because they're disingenuous, they're deceitful. You don't have to ask me. Go and ask the survivors of CSE. It's now, they suddenly now care because an election's come around. Thank you, Joe. Green it is. Right, I want to talk about the Oldham group. Let's bring this up. Vision Oldham. This is the uh, manifesto as such. And they got six points in this Hollywood one. They'll have similar, you know, five consistent points and one is ward specific, I would imagine. Vision Oldham is what they claim. Front and centre is stop the genocide. Second one is a Muslim graveyard. Third one is a CSC. Council tax, something about Oldham first and Hollywood. Now let me bring this up so it's clearer. Sorry. So the first thing and where this group was formed is to do with the Palestinian cause. I have no issue with that. I wrote the, uh, I did their amendment for them and I wrote the motion for them. That's right. I did their amendment for him and I wrote their motion for him. And I did that because I wanted to make sure when they came to me and asked me for help, I wanted to make sure that I could do whatever possible to make sure that as many councillors as possible would vote for it and support it and it would steer away from the anti-Semitism that many members of my community are very, you know, it's an easy trap for them. It's an easy trap for them as the far-right racism is an easy trap for many people, friends of mine from the white working class community. So I, I did that amendment for him and I did the, wrote the motion for him. They, had, they were clueless. The Muslim graveyard issue, they've been disingenuous. Of course, all Labour councillors voted against the Muslim graveyard, but they didn't. The motion wasn't to do with the Muslim graveyard. Remember Cameron Gaffar brought it and it was uh, Pam Byrne who seconded it. Their motion was for public land to be handed over to a yet to be formed group from the Pakistani Bangladeshi whatever community 
and then for, from which would then create some sort of not-for-profit sort of business that would have a monopoly over how Muslims were buried. The Muslim graveyard, the way the Conservatives presented it, Cameron Gafford presented it, should never... It was right that it was voted down. And at the time, it was the first motion and one motion we did with the, uh, the, the independent group. And we had Mark Hintz amend that. We amended I amended it. It was to create a Muslim section in every graveyard. Which was the more sensible option. And I yet to come across anyone who will argue differently with me. If you're a Muslim and you die in Failsworth, you should have a section in Failsworth Cemetery where you can be buried. If you're a Muslim and you die in Shaw and Crompton, you should have a se you know, section in uh, Hollywood, and so on and so on. I don't think anyone is going to disagree with that. And currently you can't do that. You've got to go to Chaddington. So they're being disingenuous. And the CSC one was what I pushed them for. I said, if I'm helping you with this, you've got to help me with that. But even the... They, uh, they fudged it. And this is their own writing. I shall be pressuring the current administration at the council to open an independent inquiry with an E. So it's actually with an, meant to be with an I. That's how much attention they gave it. Into the child sexual exploitation of children from Oldham. Our children are the most important members of our community and should be protected. I want to force the administration to pay for an independent inquiry so we can finally find out what had happened now. They've not stopped to listen. We don't want the council to commission anything. Because if the council commissions an independent inquiry, it won't be independent. Will it? Forget the spelling with an E. This is just blatant electioneering, last minute blatant electioneering, hoping they can win over some white votes, particularly in Hollywood and also in Waterhead where they are hoping to win seats. When you can't even pay attention to spell the word properly and you can't get to the point where you're we take the effort to understand how you go about getting an in public inquiry, not an independent. We've been pushing for a public inquiry because a public inquiry has certain rights, powers that these Andy Burnham type reviews, assurance reviews, council commission bollocks will never get to. So they're playing us there. They're playing the Muslims with the Muslim graveyard and they're playing the white working class community with the CSE. And the genocide one is, is clearly, you know. They say enough on council tax. We promise that if the Oldham group has the power to lower council tax, we will make sure that this happens. Well, the only way you'll have the power to lower council tax is if you control the council. I can promise to give all of you a million pounds who've been supporting me once I have a hundred million pounds or a thousand million or a billion pounds. It's not very likely, is it? So it's a promise that you can't uphold. And I have nothing against the from, by the way. He's clearly not written this. This is Cammy G. I will be the voice for all Oldhamers and put our town and its residents first. The aim of our party, well, first of all, the Oldham group is not a party. It's not registered with the Electoral Commission. It's no different to how the uh, right and independents are or how... Uh, Mark Ince is showing Crompton independence are. There's no governance arrangements, there's no membership, there's none of that. These aren't political parties. 
they're not democratic institutions. The aim of our party is to make sure that as Oldhamers we receive the best services that we are entitled to. For, t for far too long, the administration has given vanity projects precedence over the real needs of normal Oldhamers. So what on earth does that mean? You translate that gobbledygook into firm objectives, policies, nothing. It's just bollocks. And the last one is open space in Hollywood have been, open spaces in Hollywood have been neglected for far too long. We want to help has residents in Hollywood to develop their areas and help them with maintaining open spaces. Again, it's bollocks. It means nothing. That's exactly what it is. It's blabber, Tony. It means absolute nothing. So this is the manifesto that they're standing on. It's absolute nonsense. And what I want to pick up on is this Oldham first and all Oldhamers. It's their own phrase. It's all Oldhamers. Vision Oldham. Vision Oldham. The Oldham group is a new party. Capital N, actually. Capital P. Uh, never mind her. Uh, I struggle with grammar like that. Do it. Set up in Oldham. <laughs> well, I didn't think the Oldham group would be set up in Rochdale. To fight against a self-serving, complacent Labour Party. Comma. Complete. That has let us down for over four decades. Well, Cameron Gofford was a Labour Party councillor during those four decades. Our aim is to represent the community of Oldham and the issues that matter to them. We will no longer let the mainstream parties dictate to the people of Oldham. We are the Oldham group and we will listen to you. So let's have a look at the Oldham Group's candidate. Remember, they are here to represent all of Oldham. And they've selected these candidates. They've picked them. They've not been forced on them. They've picked these candidates. Nothing against this guy. Standing in Alexander Ward. Like him, like his family. Zahir Ali. Male Pakistani. Nothing against Naveed Chohan. He was a conservative until he stood down. Pakistani Muslim. Nothing against Shamas Altaf. Pakistani Muslim. Aisha Kausa's leaflets I did last year when she was part of uh, uh, Aftab's independent team. Nothing against the lady, not met her. In fact, I admire her bravery. She's the only woman in the team. Yet again, Pakistani Muslim. Muhammad Ali, absolute vermin as far as I'm concerned. I'll tell you a story about this in a, in a little while. Bangladeshi Muslim. Majid Khan. They put Majid Khan in Failsworth West. I spoke with Brian Hobin last week. Raj, have you had a call from the Oldham group? Did you put them up in Failsworth West? I bugger Brian, what on earth are you on about? Yeah, this guy called Majid Khan. Oh, yeah, 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 I had a call, Brian, but I just laughed at it because uh, they needed someone to nominate and second it and ask me if I, if I could get two of my friends in Failsworth to do it. And I said, no. He goes, yeah, yeah. He had the same call from him. They're so uh, well known in Failsworth West, they put Majid Khan in where they struggled to get someone to nominate and second them. Irfat Shahajan. Chadderton Central. And the other one, I couldn't find a leaflet for him, so you'll have to uh, excuse me for a minute. So 
I bring it up is in Chadderton North Mohammed Shah Alam is another guy so what they've got what these guys have got Sorry, I'm just begging this bigger. What these guys have got is, I think, nine candidates. Nine candidates. Six of them are Pakistani, three of them are Bangladeshi, all Muslim. And the wards they're standing in include... I'd get it if it was just the inner wards where the demographic is that way. I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to see more diversity, but that's by the by. What they've got is they put up a Pakistani candidate in Failsworth. They put a Bangladeshi candidate up in all three of the Chariton wards. And the question I ask myself, I ask you, it's why I started with the right and independence is, we've been here before. We've been here before where we've done all the heavy lifting and these people jump on our, on our backs and use us to advance themselves for their own personal gain. Or tell me I'm reading this wrong. I entered into discussions with Cameron Gaffor in an open and transparent way. I was asked to go and see him because they'd set up the Oldham group. They wanted to do this pro-Palestinian motion and stuff. I contacted him and I saw him at his restaurant in the afternoon. And I was very clear. From the outset, I was very clear. I'm not a politician, am I? I'm proud of that, that I'm not a politician, by the way. When I say I'm not a politician, it's, uh, it's something that makes me smile inside. And I said, and he asked me, what my plans were. And my plans are very transparent. I'm standing to be MP for Oldham West and Royton, Oldham West, Chadderton and Royton as an independent candidate against Jim McMahon. And he said, well, he wants to be MP himself. He wants to stand for MP himself. And at the time, he was still involved in the Conservative Party. And he was looking at Oldham East and Saddleworth. Shrugged my shoulders and said, well, if you're looking at Oldham East and Saddleworth, then there's no issue here, is there between you and me? I wrote the motion and the amendment for him overnight, one night. I think the boxing was on and they'd not done it. And of course, Eric has been pushing this lot on pause because Paul Eric doesn't stop to understand any of this. How can you push all of these candidates? They're a political party, by the way. They're not independents. They're claiming to be a political party made up exclusively of Muslims. How can you? They had ample opportunity to go and recruit candidates from other backgrounds or, failing that, they had ample opportunity to go and endorse candidates from other independent parties. So I left first meeting quite positive he was very clear I was standing and he would support me no ambiguity because I, I don't work in ambiguous spaces I'm very clear 
he wanted a favour of me, which was, a was to facilitate a meeting between himself and Lewis Quigg. Because they'd had a falling out whilst he was a Conservative. And at the time, his motive was to get back into the Conservative Party. I facilitated that meeting with Lewis. Again, at his restaurant. It was a tense meeting because they had some bad blood. But we got to an agreement. Again, I made clear I was standing in Oldham West. Lewis affirmed that. And he was looking for a way back into the Conservative Party, as in Cammy G, back into the Conservative Party so he could stand in Oldham East. He'd worked out that standing as an independent in Oldham East, he wouldn't be able to carry the votes. There wasn't enough Pakistanis who'd vote for him, or Bangladeshis or Muslims who'd vote for him. I'm very clear. Look at, look, just look at all of you following me here. My appeal is across communities. I know I cannot win without the support of the white working class, and I know the white working class, the white middle class, the conservatives, they are with me. Liberal Democrat voters, I have a cross-community alliance of people who've supported me and continue to support me. Now, the agreement made between Cameron Gaffar and Lewis Quigg, whilst I was there, was Cameron wanted the way clear in Hollywood for his candidate, Erfan, and he wanted the way clear for his candidate in What's ahead? Naveed. And what we agreed at the time was in return Chadderton North, Chadderton Central and also called us at the time because uh, Montaz was a conservative still at the time would be left alone from the Oldham group. Agreed. Simple. Simple exchange. You put paper candidates here, you ignore us over here, and we'll take out Labour politicians across the board. Yep. Straightforward agreement between two former Conservatives. You know, one former Conservative and the Chairman of the Conservative Party. Azad came back under pressure, wanting to go conservative or toying with the idea. I said, fine, as I go and see Kami G. You've got his number. He went off. We saw Kami G. He left, dilly dallied a bit. And in the end, he left, but he didn't join the Oldham group. He decided he'd stand as an independent in his own right. Razan in Chadderton Central got scared, went and had a conversations, left, so on and so on. They all had conversations in the lead up. <coughs> but the agreement was clear. Come the nominations in Failsworth style. The Oldham group put up a Bangladeshi candidate and I know it's the Oldham group because the name of the agent is Abdul Wahid that's Councillor Abdul Wahid puts up a candidate in Chadderton Central and he also puts up a candidate in Chadderton North you can see it there So they were happy to backstab the Conservatives, their former mates. And the reason they put up those candidates, the only viable reason as to why they put up those candidates is they've got no chance of winning. Their candidates won't even get 100, 200 votes. They've got no chance of winning. So these are the reasons why. And take your pick which one you think is most appropriate. One. As I explained to Naveed Chowan when he phoned me, 
His party leader, Cammy G, is involved in a pissing contest with Lewis Quigg. He hates Lewis Quigg. Lewis Quigg also has no love for him, by the way. So it's exactly what the right, uh, what the fails of idiots are doing. Cammy G is involved in that, trying to undermine, trying to attack the Conservatives in areas where they might get a look in. Where the opposition, by the way, is Labour. So that's reason one. Reason two, he's gone and got himself, he's trying to show a spread of support. And he's trying to show a spread of support, which is also why they've put up a candidate in Failsworth. He's trying to show a spread of support with a view of getting George Galloway's endorsement and the Workers' Party for a potential parliamentary bid in Oldham West, where I'm standing. Which is fine. No issue with that. That's what you want to go and do. Off you do. I've made it clear to George Galloway. I've made it clear to everyone. I'm an independent. The people of this town have to win this fight on our own. Your help, your endorsement, your support would be appreciated. And if Galloway gives us that, great. If he doesn't give us that, that's also great. We go into this fight because we've been fighting. And we're raising our own banners. And the third reason, which gained more traction the more I heard conversations around me, was that he, you know, these, these are Bangladeshi candidates. I am a Bangladeshi origin. I'm Bangladeshi. What he's looking to do is see how many votes he can take from me in the lead up to the election. So he was to stand in Oldham West because the only way he'll win, or the only chance he has, is by promoting this Muslim, you know, agenda, leading this Muslim agenda, the Gaza thing, and trying to use that to gal galvanise votes from across the Pakistani and the Bangladeshi community both. Now I have, it's an area I was raised in, these are people I know. They'll vote for me. Which is why, despite him having spoken to me beforehand and quite categorically said he wants to stand in Oldham East and he'd support me in Oldham West, I started getting phone calls from people I trusted my life. People I trusted my life. Either Cameron Gaffar or Wahid, Councillor Wahid, had been lobbying influential Bangladeshis. You know, lads who, if they turned up and said, I'm with him, meant, you know, 500 more would be with me. Not appreciation, appreciating or not even aware of the history I have with these people which is why they came to me straight away. Roger, Wahid's phoned me. He wants to know if I'll support Cameron Gaffar if he's going to stand in Oldham West. Roger, Cameron Gaffar's phoned me. He's trying to work out whether I'm going to support you if you stand and if you, you know, if I'm going to support you and if I don't support you, whether uh, I can, you know, lobby for him. So that's the truth of what's gone on. Now, what do you think I'm meant to do? I've supported these people. I wrote the amendments, wrote the motions, encouraged many of you to vote for them, support them, give them a chance. And then what happens? The list of candidates comes out. And I get in Alexander, you've got to put a Muslim person up. I get in St. Mary's, you've got to put one up. I get in Calders if you're standing. I get that. But what on earth are you doing putting up these candidates in Failsworth? Or Chadderton North?
Why aren't you endorsing and supporting Paul Taylor and some of the Oldham Hearts team? Even if you wanted to disagree with the Chadderton Central Conservative candidate because of your bad blood with them and despite you reneging on your agreement with them, even if you wanted to do that, why do you put up a Bangladeshi no-hoper to try and split the vote or steal votes in the long term away from me instead of going and supporting a genuine independent there? And then when I've said, right, I'm not going to stand for this, I'm going to... You know, we've been here before, haven't we? We've been here before with Paul Eric and his Proud of Oldham team. Where did that get them? We've been here before with Mark Hintz. Look at the state of him now. Maggie Hurley, laughing stock. Look what's happened in Failsworth. The civil war. I know what I bring. And the allegation that I fall out with people. No, I don't fall out with people. I refuse to be used by people. I welcome all. Take everything from me. As long as you're genuinely involved in building a better town and delivering justice for our children. But the minute you start to play games with me. I'm not going to take one for the team. As Markins told me recently, we've got a good thing going on. I'm not here for a good thing. I'm here for justice. I'm not here to play Pakistani politics or backroom labour brown envelope bollocks. I'm clear, I'm straight. And that's why I'm still here on this journey five years in. So he starts phoning around us, Cammy G. Phones friends of mine. Phones me. I ignore. I, I respond in. I'm not interested. That Navid Chohan men con tried to contact me loads of times. I was also away with my daughter. I'm like, no. I'm done with you guys. Straightforward. I'm done with you guys. Because your leader is not just playing you because your leaflets and stuff are crap in terms of you can't deliver what you're saying and no one, he's not even took the time to understand what is written. But he's involved in a pissing contest with the Conservatives and he's trying to use the Oldham group as a stepping stone to progress his career as a parliamentarian. Now, if he was honest with me and said, Raja, I would make a better candidate than you. I can champion this. I would make a better candidate than you. Can we sit down and have a chat? I would sit down and have a chat because I never wanted to be a bloody politician. But these people don't come from that world. And that is what's gone on, to which the threat was, if I don't behave, you'll stand against me. Well, then stand against me. Tell your boys first you're standing against me. Stand against me. Let's see how many white people in Hollywood vote for you. Let's see how many Bangladeshis vote for you. Let, you can't even get the word of people to support you. Oh, I've not told you that, have I? When Nyla and Shoaib went independent, Cammy J, and Nyla's his cousin, by the way, tried to sign up Nyla to the independent group. She refused. Sorry, the Oldham group. She refused. Point blank refused. So I'm comfortable with my support. And win or lose, 
I will fight Jim McMahon. And you can be due with your millions, do whatever you want, but re re recognise and realise this. I won't be threatened, I won't be intimidated, and I'll call it as I see it. And the way I see it is that the Oldham group are exploiting the CSE issue. They've not even took the time to understand it properly. They've jumped on the Gaza bandwagon and once the conservative door closed to them, they're not even being honest with you as to what went on in the Conservative Party. They're claiming they left. No. Two of them were expelled. I've seen the paperwork. I've, time st I've got a timestamp of when they issued that video saying they'd left. When they issued that video saying they'd left, I've seen the timestamp of, of the email they've got. Or the correspondence they've got. They were expelled. They stayed in the party until the party kicked them out and then pretended they'd left. So my question of you, question I'm asking myself, and another reason why I started with Maggie Hurley. And this journey we've been on. How many of the people, how many of the councillors we replaced Labour councillors with have been an improvement? How many of them have been genuine? Mark Hintz, no chance. Maggie Hurley, no chance. Sandra Ball tried to sabotage a CSE motion, no chance. Mark Wilkinson, CSE wasn't an issue on the doorstep and I still vote for him because I actually you know and he, he, that's him falling out with me and everything but I still I think you know he's the closest one out of the names I've mentioned Brian Hobin made many mistakes tried to amend himself Neil Hindle doesn't turn up to enough council meetings for me same as Stephen Bashfiff Lucia? I don't know her. I think she tries. She does lots of, you know, ward-based work. Low-level stuff, but it's fine. The Conservatives? Yeah. The Oldham Conservatives? I think so. Lewis, Dave... Best been quieter this year, but been a breath of fresh air, I thought. I think quieter because uh, she's lost her mentor. We saw what happened to Robert and how he was shut down. But of the independents, how many have come through? And the reason I asked this, and this is a slide I produced, a slideshow I produced, and I want to run through it with you. The man who would be king. Saviour, sectarian alternative, a secret motive. Well, I don't think his motive is very secret at all. I think he'll use his own people. Never mind me. I think he'll use his own people. The question. I have a series of questions. Should people be concerned? 
Do the politicians involved in the Oldham group belong to a group that can primarily... I don't even know I spelled that wrong, sorry. I was working on it earlier. From one community and a religion. I think they do. Should that be concerning? I think it should. One of the criticisms we've had of the Labour Party is how it's mono-ethnic and mono-religious, tribal, in the inner wards. Why would we want to replace like for like? Now, I don't like the Labour Party. Do the Oldham Group supporters come primarily from one community or religion? You've seen the posters, you've seen them, you know, walking, you know, doing, doing door knocking. Do the politicians involved in the Oldham Group promote the political interests of primarily one single community and religion? I say yes again. And the word for this is sectarianism. The word you're looking for as we're going through these questions is sectarianism. Do the politicians involved in the Oldham Group exclude other communities? Yes. Why have they not put up a white candidate anywhere? And if they can't engage, they can't reach out to white people because they're not in the natural circles that they operate in, why have they not gone out and endorsed some of the white independents? The politicians involved in the Oldham Group do exclude other communities. Indeed, Tony. Indeed. So let's move on from whether you're sectarian. Let's look at your approach. Do politicians involved in the Oldham Group have a reliance on postal votes? Go and have a look at how the Conservatives got elected in Hollingwood last time. Something like 80 or 90% of their votes were postal votes. I make no allegations. All I can share with you is my experience. And my experience of postal votes at that rate means harvesting. My experience of postal roads are 80-90%. And I make no allegations. I'm sharing my experience. George Galloway got in recently. With what? 90 odd percent of his votes were postal votes. I've been very clear on my political position. Postal votes should not be available on demand. It should be only available those in need, such as you know, those who are serving in the armed forces, disabled, registered disabled in hospitals, such you know things like that. I know postal vote harvesting goes on in Oldham. The police know postal vote harvesting goes on in Oldham. No one's brave enough to touch it. In the same way, no one was brave enough to touch the CSE scandal I'm not making any allegations as to whether postal vote harvesting took place in Hollywood all I'm saying was all I'm saying is there was a disproportionate number of postal votes collected do the politicians involved in the Oldham group have hidden business interests and have failed and or have failed to declare interests. Go and have a look at Cameron Gaffar's declaration of interests. It reads like something out of a redacted, like he's some sort of MI5 agent. Why? Why has his HMOs, his multiple HMO businesses, been redacted out? I asked him and he claimed it was because the borough solicitor recommended it. The politicians involved in the Oldham Group and their families financially benefit from decisions the council and, the, and its partners make. 
You've seen how the Mustangs, in particular, and I'm not picking on them per se. I put up a question on the Oldham Chronicle story to do with HMOs. Why doesn't the Oldham Chronicle go and do a story on how many councillors and their families are involved in HMOs? We can expand it to other businesses as well, but as HMOs are topical. Do the politicians involved in the Oldham group have criminal associations? And the reason I'm asking that is because you know of Arud Shah's links with convicted heroin dealing getaway driver of an Oldham cop killer. Irish Emmy. The convicted kidnapper, Zia Hussein, who tortured a young man, kidnapped and tortured her brother, the money launderer. I'm not going to go into details right now, but I will go into details. Because you want to stand against me. Or threaten to stand against me. Well, come and stand. And let's have it all out. And I've got a dossier. So what I'm saying, can Cameron Gaffer and his Olden Group be trusted? That's the question I'm asking you. Can they be trusted? Yes. In Hollywood, they are the easiest one to vote for to take out, keep Labour out. Yes, in Waterhead, they are the easiest one to vote for, to get rid of Labour. And I'd want nothing more than to see Ross Birch lose. But can they be trusted? Is this a shortcut to what we're trying to achieve? I don't want to switch like for like. Or like for worse. Or like for too similar, you can't tell the difference. I don't think any of you want the same like that. Yes, we have high standards. What's wrong with having high standards? We want genuine people who will represent all of us and won't play silly buggers, won't play games, won't use us as a stepping stone. And that's the question I'm leaving you with. I have more, which I'll do, I think, tomorrow. I have more, which I'll do tomorrow. As to what Cameron Gaffor and his team will do, should they get six or seven elected. And I think you'll enjoy that transmission. You're going to come after me. We need to realise I don't back down. I don't retreat. I definitely don't surrender. And bigger and harder, more powerful people than you have come for me, Kamiji. If you find value in this transmission, please like, please share. There are attempts to censor and silence me in the lead up to this. There were threats made. Well, I'm here. Bring it on. Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them. On the 20th of November 2003, James Ignatius O'Rourke McMahon was elected councillor for the Failsworth East Ward of Oldham. Deeply ambitious, he ruthlessly rose to power and by 2011, he was already leader of the council. In 2015, exploiting a Labour Party loophole, he became MP for Oldham West and Royton. 
If only the people of the town knew then what they now know. Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them.